history. And 14 points per game coming in the fast break. Now, like Kentucky before them, when they struggle defensively, they are vulnerable in their 10 losses this season. Opponents that have averaged 92 points a game against them. Here's Aaron Estrada with the touch for Bama. Latrell Reitzel Jr. and Grant Nelson. They're going to go five out. And Nelson's off the mark with his first three. He was a pivot point in both of the Florida games for Bama. In the win, he played well. In the loss, he fouled out and was not impactful. Those are the starters for the Gators. They've been consistent with their starting five. But Micah Hanlogton did not see much time last night. And Hanlogton to get scored on as Nick Pringle comes flying down the lane. Well, they want to drive Florida's guards because when the help defender comes over, there's that pocket pass. You've got to dive hard to the rim. Well executed there. Third meeting in 24 days between these two teams. Alabama won on its home court in overtime by 5, 98 to 93. Samuel leads it short, and then Florida hammered him 105 87 on senior day. Layup for Latrell Wright, so Jr., he is a difference maker. Well, A plus for Alabama to start this game based on the scouting report. They're going to play one on one down here in the post, hold their own, and then drive those guards to the basket, as you saw right there. Samuel mid-range that is a shot that Alabama will invite him to take all night long Right so gets it right back and it finds Nelson on the die banks it in Two pocket passes and three possessions Alabama has found a recipe against this Florida defense Walter Clayton jr. Off balance and right to the board Here's Estrada. Remember, Mark Sears, the leading scorer for this team. He is a very calm influence on the offensive end. He doesn't hunt his own shot. He hasn't needed to. His teammates have led them to an early lead. How did those two experiences differ, or were they similar? Uh, similar in terms of the intensity level, the amount of detail, and really, these teams are so familiar with each other. Uh, they were telling the team was Alabama, hey guys, I know this looks like the third time we've seen this film and this movie, but we've got to lock in on these opportunities. Their game plan really didn't change much. It was, we just have to execute it better. And that's why you see an 8-0 lead right now from Alabama. All eight in the paint so far for Nate Oates' team. This is a squad that is third in the country making 11 threes per game. But they have flipped the script just like a and did in game one. And another rim look broken up. And now Zion Poland. Over to Will Richard, a great first half player. That was the word in the film room. And Richard gets the first make for the Gators. He had 13 quick ones last night. It was quiet after that. Estrada for three. Got it. A sizzling start for Alabama. Five of seven from the floor. Tyrese Samuel can't make it from three feet away, and here comes Sears. If you make their big shoot, their offensive rebounding threat goes way down. Sears brought it all the way back down to the court with him. And now Walter Clayton Jr. with the left-handed layup. He is really good at transition at the rim. No more for his three-point shooting in the half-court set. But when he sees the defense backpedaling, he continues to attack. This is a high volume, high efficiency Alabama offense. You get Reitzel for the push shot, and all he can do is laugh. It's his first math teacher. Yeah, it's not that Florida's bigs can't make those little floaters in the lane, it's just a numbers game. The good news for Alabama fans is Ryland Griffin, who had that injury, has come back into the lineup. It's a big key to them. Pulling, dancing with Nelson. They brought help out in the form of Griffin. Shot clock at five, Clayton challenge three is wide left. And here's Riley Griffin leading the way for the Crimson Tide and an open floor foul. Charge to Walter Clayton Jr. They've done a nice job of closing out on Clayton and making him put it on the deck. He's a good three-point shooter, but he is lethal when it's a catch and stick versus putting it on the bow, putting it on the floor a couple times. Bama has started this game five of seven. An overtime win against Arkansas to close the regular season out on Saturday. Griffin is wide left. His 16 second chance points in that one. And they were 
slow starting, but they finish strong seven of nine in overtime. And Logton gets fouled on the rebound. That is an issue for Grant Nelson. Over the last four games, he's committed 19 personal fouls. Five buckets, four assists so far for Alabama. Got a Kugel on the floor. He was the savior last night. In the last 15 seconds, he went to the free throw line three times and went a perfect six for six from the line. Pulling with the push off. Todd Golden not happy. Well, NATO has to be thrilled because this has been their weakness. They have been unable to guard the ball without getting blown by. And so for Sears to cut pulling off there and first team all SEC point guard and pulling to guard him like that is a huge step in the right direction for this Alabama defense. It's fair to say that's been an issue for the Florida guards as well. And they were exposed last night multiple times by Georgia getting to the rim. Here's Sears leaving Poland behind. Then tried to go into him for the whistle. And a foul underneath will go against Alabama and Muhammad Wagi. All right, so what does Florida want to be when they set up their offense in the half court? Well, they want to get it in their guards' hands. Their bigs are in the game to get offensive rebounds. But watch Alabama's bigs. They're going to hang out right around the logo, the restricted arc. They will not follow their big up there unless there's a ball screen. But look at that congested lane. They want to make Florida pay for having two non-shooting bigs on the court at the same time. Condon gets cut off, turns it into a beautiful blind jump hook. 6'11", freshman from Perth, Australia. Darren Stevenson on the floor for Bama. Here's Griffin. And back to their leading scorer, Sears. All conference versus all conference, and Sears wins this one. Mark Sears in the matchup in Gainesville had 33 points, drew eight fouls. A good chunk of those points came in the last five minutes of the game when it was already decided, but Florida could not stay in front of it. When he showed the ability to attack with the right hand as teams sit on that left, he's got to be able to do it both ways. Condon had a mouse in the house. Yeah, this kid's really good. The freshman's going to be an all-SEC player in this league. Sears off the handoff. Fires for three. Griffin kept it alive. And a trap in the corner keeps it Alabama's way. Not much Sears could do here as they... Ended up with a switch and Condon with good recognition. No help comes. They want to play one on one in the post, but that's when it's big on big. If you see your guard down there, bring some help. Don't let Condon take advantage. Condon on the SEC All Freshman team, the first Florida big so honored in 14 years. Griffin turns the corner, turns it over. And Kugel keeps it this way. They said Wrights will touch it when he was out of bounds. Terrell Wrights Jr. is just a bundle of energy. He's a three-point threat. Last year, it was a Big West Conference all-conference performer on the tournament team. And his team was 16 points a game. Nate Oates has said he cannot have him turn down open threes. Here's Condon. He is a threat from three. Wrights got caught with his hands in the cookie jar. That's his second. And so the red-hot shooter will have to head to the Bama bench, and he's replaced by Estrada. Also in the game, Sam Walters, freshman out of the Villages, Florida, just down the road from Gainesville. The Florida staff took over and Todd Goldman. He was already committed to Alabama. He had a great game against the Gators in Tuscaloosa. Google had it thrown off of the five Pringle. Estrada all the way down the lane. Nobody stops him. And then we get a wedgie on a touch from Pringle. That was abysmal transition defense. You must stop the ball. And Florida gets bailed out with the easiest two as Estrada was a little bit afraid of Condon coming over. And I think that caused him to be uncertain at the rim. Condon with the ball fake. He's shooting 30% from deep. The handoff and that three's in and out. And a rebound to Pringle. Out to Nelson. 6-11. Great Nelson, a good ball handler for his size.
Sears from the Walters screen. Right back to him. Sharpshooter puts up an air ball, and a fight for the rebound will result in a foul on Florida in Condon. That's a really nice effort by Pringle. I mean, it's a long season, and this is a great example of a kid, Nick Pringle, who was suspended for a few games. He didn't do anything wrong off the court or on the court. It was just about being more receptive to coaching, body language, those sort of things that Nate Oates just said, look, you've got to be better, be less emotional. And he has made the most of his second chances, or second chance here in this season and been a huge impact for Alabama down low. It is such a guard-driven offense that one of the ways they engage their five-man is by having him be the point person in many ways and they operate from the high post. That's a lot of responsibility and engagement for him when it's really the guards to get most of the scoring opportunities by far. Shot clock at five. Nelson drives. Running hook. Hey, Magic Johnson, where'd that yeah. come from? <laughs> Grant Nelson, he is a big key to this offense, and maybe he doesn't shoot it quite as well as people thought he would as he transferred in, but he gives them a lot of versatility, can guard fours and fives as well on this end of the court. Foul came before the block and will be charged to Pringle. How about the running jump hook by Grant Nelson. Didn't Magic do this against your Sixers in the playoffs? <laughs> in the finals when you were just a... It did, I, I don't know that I was lean. watching it live, but... A little bit of dual Jabbar as well. Up and down series against Florida this season for Nelson. 22 and 8 in Tuscaloosa. Just 12 and 6 in the game in Gainesville, which he fouled out. He's a guy really that you know, if he can hold his own down low at the five spot, which is a tough challenge because he can give up a little bit of weight and strength down there. But we've seen him do it against the likes of Tolu Smith at Mississippi State. When he can play the five, it allows him to put four more guards on the court. And I think that could come into play tonight as Florida likes to play with two traditional bigs. Make those guys get on the perimeter and guard. Sam Walters with the rebound. Estrada gets a screen. And a whistle away from the ball. Aberdeen charged with trying to defend Sears and fighting through it. It's whistled for his first. Aberdeen only played about a minute last night. Came in late in the game. Some ball handling responsibilities and an inbound against the Georgia Press, but they're going to him early tonight. And an offensive foul. Not an illegal screen. Sears didn't even challenge it. He, he just got a little too physical right before that screen. He pushes off there. The moving screen. <laughs> Fouled a couple times on that one. Condon, surprised you didn't look to shoot that one. Clayton Jr. into Nelson. Rebounded by Pringle. Sears across midcourt, Aberdeen on him. A little pick and roll right down the middle, Pringle. Missed the hammer, and the Gators coming the other way. It's been two and a half minutes since Florida's made a bucket. Aberdeen push shot is good. Four point swing there. Alabama did everything right except the finish. Florida made them pay. Nice floater by Aberdeen. Aberdeen fighting to try and stay in front of Sears, but can't. Commits his second. They asked me if I brought my sleeping bag. I said, no, I know we're on the bus for a while, but I I'll be fine without it. And then they pulled up to a chapel when they got to town in the visiting campus. He said, probably going in here just to watch film or maybe have a walkthrough. He was surprised when he learned that they would be sleeping on the gymnasium floor. <laughs> Welcome to Division Three life. And I think Nate Oates still has that blue-collar mentality that you learn being a non-scholarship Division Three athlete. Uh, as much attention as offense gets, you see the type of hustle there and the way they hand out the hard hats. There's a look at Nate Oates. He, he did admit to his nickname playing high school football in Wisconsin. It was Vanilla Ice. He said, yeah, I, I was rocking one of those cool fades slash high top, uh, uh, flat tops for a little while. 
thought it was awesome how you got him rapid, too. That was cool. <laughs> right in the middle of shooter up. Well, he's rolling in his 5.0. Sears finds Nelson, dive and dunk. So that's the third time we've seen them get Florida on that play, and another time was a missed dunk. So they're getting a lot of success out of that just short pick and roll, hard dive by the big. Clayton behind the house screen, buries the three, and Florida has tied it at 17. You cannot go under, you gotta go over the top. Send him towards the paint. Kick out for a Stevenson three. That's an answer. First triple for Jaron Stevenson. Clayton just toying with Sears, but couldn't knock it down. Aberdeen fights for the rebound. It's off of Florida. It will be Alabama basketball. I love the way Mark Sears is competing on the defensive end. He has taken this challenge personal against the Florida guards. Terrific ball pressure for Sears. Not somebody you really call the head of the snake defensively, but this guy wants to go to the next level as you start to compare him and his game to the likes of guys like Jalen Brunson. It's got to be that sort of effort on the defensive end he's shown in this first half. Estrada got away with a carry, I thought. Here's Nelson. Nelson with the drive. Samuel rejects it. What a recovery by Tyrese Samuel, the Seton Hall transfer. Out of bounds, off of Bama. Felt like a mismatch when this drive started. Yeah, Grant Nelson thinking he's going to be able to get to the rim, take the big off the bounce, but Samuel had other plans. Walter Clayton Jr., second team all conference, transferred in from Iona. We play for Rick Patino, tried to get him to come to St. John's. He chose Florida instead. Riley Kugel. Down the lane and a layup. Nelson just bailed on him. Google just brings a different dimension and score off the bench. He would start for most all teams in the SEC, but it's really starting to thrive late in the season in that six man role. Tough pass, threaded the needle. Three no good from Griffin. Estrada picks the pocket of Walter Clayton Jr. Right, so nice touch. You can tell the point of emphasis is attack the rim, get to the paint. As that's now 18 points for Alabama in the paint. Kugel tried to shake Griffin, and Nelson came to help him. And now how for three. Riley Kugel the rebound. I'm sure they should reset. Did that hit rim? I think it have to hit the corner, yeah. It was not pretty. Nelson rejects that one. Samuel picks it up. Not the prettiest possession, but Florida finds a way to get to. And you feel like Alabama's really been the more physical team in this one. But here's Florida just sticking around. Nelson did not make the three lower Broadway tonight. Trying to negotiate those cancellation policies right now at the hotel. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. But well, congratulations on your ticket upgrade next time you go to Food City Center. Poland penetrates on Reitzel. Back out to Kugel. Got clock getting late. It's a five. Samuel trying to drive. Couldn't find the rim that time. Bama got off to a hot start, but tide has cooled considerably. They pour their first five for an 8-0 lead since then, just 6 of 17. But I still think that's a positive side for Alabama, that they don't just have to outscore you to win the game. Uh, yes, they want to be more efficient on the offensive end, but their defensive game plan is where they needed the biggest improvement. They've executed it so far, making role players take the majority of shots for Florida, resulting in 9 of 24 from the floor for Florida. Now charge to Kula. Estrada around the Sears screen and behind Pringle for three. That's a good looking play. Aaron Estrada has his second triple. You cannot go underneath that. You have to stay connected to these shooters and fight over the top. Pulling right down the lane. Let me ask you though, from a defensive standpoint, does it make it more difficult when Mark Sears is the one setting the screen for the shooter? It, it can, but they've got a, there they go again. They're going underneath. Out to right, sir. 
Tried to wrap around pass, nearly threw it away. Fell right to Judy with the drive over Hanlogson. And that's what Nate Oates has talked about. He said, look, if they're going to play two bigs, let's spread them out and make them guard us off the bounce. That's not the matchup Florida wanted to have. Google challenge two. Sears intercepted by Poland. Just didn't see him sitting there, and Poland's floater goes. Zion Poland, UC Riverside transfer, has got four. Florida has a two-point deficit. He's so poised and good, and really exceptional in the mid-range. Sears bounces it to Nelson. Shares it to Pringle for the jam. Getting all off that ball screen action, hitting the big, nice extra feed at the rim. And a Mark Sears foul, he said, man, I was chested up and in front of him the whole time. And it's a second on Sears. So this is what happens when you can go, when you go underneath. Excuse me, that was the one where they go over the top. It's Grant Nelson with the extra feed. When that rim protection comes over, you have to anticipate it and know that it's gonna be one extra pass to make the defense pay. Zion Poland to the free throw line. Transfer from Pleasant Hill, California. Four seasons at UC Riverside, a 1,300 point score there, three time All Big West Conference. Two for two from the line for Poland. Under six to play in the first half, and Sears playing with two personal fouls. Turns his back and reverses it in with incredible body control and vision. Well, and they get a ball screen going uphill that time, a really unique way to get Sears an opportunity for a driving lane. Clayton fires first touch. You gotta have a hand up. He is so good and has such a terrific quick release. Florida hanging right there despite the fact that Alabama has led the entire game. Sears with the shake. Yanked down by Will Richard. Clayton finds Richard on the cut. Nelson defends and gets the board. Sears ducks for Estrada in transition. Florida still looking for its first lead of the game. Clayton picks up the foul and goes to the free throw line. That is his second on Grant Nelson. Clayton is good off the bounce, but he is great off the catch, and you have to get out there sooner because that's when he is at his best is when he can catch and stick. But I really like how he's mixed it up. Yes, he's taken five threes, but he's put his head down a couple times to get to the rim. As you see there, off the catch, 41% from three in SEC play. When he has to deck it a couple times, that goes down to 26%. Knocks them both down, and Florida's got its first lead of the game. The chalk has been erased at the top of the bracket. We've seen it happen again with three-seed Alabama trailing for the first time. Sears crosses over Poland, steps through. He's got it taken away. Good hands by the big Alex Condon. Sears is face guarding Poland. They can't start the offense without him. Now Clayton with the drive, Pringle got in the way and Condon cleaned it up. But Bama ripped it out of the neck quickly, didn't they? Well, that was a quick push, but credit Florida with their transition defense. Griffin driving on Hauk. Rebounded. By Thomas Hawk, the freshman from Pennsylvania. That's outstanding defensive effort by Hawk. He guarded several guards on that play and cleaned up the miss. Pulling for three. 
Florida on a 10 nothing run. Well, that all started by the big man, Hal, holding his own on the defensive end, guarding his yard against smaller players, getting the defensive rebound, kicks it ahead, and here comes Pullen with the pull-up for three, and Todd Golden says, now we're cooking, let's go. That last minute of the first half was great. As you laid out, you quit talking. And that happened to be the minute where I was walking to the huddle. I wasn't even on set. I had a microphone getting ready to do a halftime interview. And uh, I've tried to learn my lesson. Well, I think it's a good job. Sometimes genius. less is more. Yeah, genius of a leader. She knew. Here's Sears. Was open for a split second. Ball fake and a spin. Try to pull up Massé on it. And then Pringle draws a foul from Thomas Howell. You mentioned what adjustment could Nate Oates make. And right now, it looks like he's favoring the offense a little bit more. Four guards around Nick Pringle. So he's trying to keep the physicality at the five, yet get faster offensively with these four sharpshooters they have on the court. So here's Nick Pringle, Jr. from Seabrook, South Carolina. Out of Dodge City Community College and in Wofford. Left that one wide right. Tuesday night, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, right here on the SEC Network. It's SEC Inside, behind the scenes of this incredible SEC tournament, pink cowboy hats and all. You can also find it on the ESPN app. Look how Pringle sets that shot. He really takes it one hand and barely touches it with the left. Trying to work, become more efficient. That's an area that he must improve on. The big game against Ain't in Corpus Christi in the NCAA tournament last year. Hamill of one seed in last year's big dance. He's pulling. Shot clock at nine. Started by Griffin right off his injury. And Griffin got off balance fighting over the screen and commits the foul. First on the sophomore of Richardson High in Dallas. Pullen, who just controls the pace of this game. He's been so steady and earned all SEC first team honors. This was a kid that was at UC Riverside, and Todd Golden had it in because the head coach, Mike McPio, at UC Riverside is one of Todd Golden's best friends. And Coach Golden said, Hey, look, in the transfer portal, I don't know how many coaches can say they've seen 40 UC Riverside games of you, but I can, thanks to the connection. He and Coach McPio had from their days at Columbia. Well, they can't be that close of friends. He stole his player. <laughs> hey, he was hitting that portal no matter what. <laughs> well, we're coming forward, first team all conference season. It's time for third in school history with 23 consecutive double figure games. First time since Nick Lathis did it in 2017, uh, probably in 1996. Largest lead of the game for the Gators are up eight thanks to the efficiency at the free throw line. Sears all the way downhill. Kugel tied him up. Either he or Condon with the foul. Veteran officiating crew, Joe Lindsay and Don Daly discuss. Up to the chagrin of Todd Golden. It's Kugel who commits his second. I am interested to see if Alabama plays in his zone. That has been effective against this Florida team this season. We've seen South Carolina have success with it. LSU have success with it. Georgia did it some. NATO said, I hate zone. I played about two possessions of it against Missouri two years ago, and I got right out of it. But in film today, the players asked, we got to play any zone. He said, we might. Let's see how it goes. Man up first. But if they don't start getting more consecutive stops, let's see if the tide go to it for the first time this season. Well, the free throw for Sears sitting on 658 points, third most in single season history. Oh, wow. And walk down the other direction. By the way, Reggie King set the school record for scoring in a single season for Alabama in 1979. Sam Walters charged with the foul, his first. Out checking the elbow before he goes to the free throw line. Out 
the Berkman School, New Oxford, Pennsylvania, where he played football, basketball, volleyball, and golf. That is a full equipment closet. It's got to get you out later here, right? It should. Dan Ryan was a football player at Shippensburg. His mom was a great volleyball player. Sears crosses Kugel. Here's Stevenson for three. Out the board. Scored on a 13 nothing run. And a Gator turnover. Yeah. Kugel and Howe just couldn't get on the same page from the outset. Yeah, Kugel made his mind up before he even read the defense that he was going to throw that lob. And <laughs> just did not read it well as the help defense came over. Bama 44% from the floor. Sears into Howe. Rebounded by Condon. Push ahead to Richard. He'll take it himself and he buries it. Well, for Alabama, Mark Sears is so good at getting to the free, free throw line and a physical driver, but when he's having to do it against 6'10, it's a lot bigger wall to try to go through. Stevenson had a knocked out of bounds by Condon. I mean, these bigs are guarding for Florida. That's what makes Florida so unique is these guys are old school and they create this transition opportunity as Richard transferred from Belmont takes care of the rest. But it's not common these days to just have a 4 and 5, 6 10, 6 10, non shooting big, but it works for this Florida team. 15 on the shot clock for Sears. Hammond has been held in check on the offensive end. Sears steps through and it's taken away. Will Richard with the steal. Here's Clayton. Into the paint. Clayton had it knocked away. It'll be a foul on Latrell Weitzel Jr. And that is his third. Partly they're going to get a stride. The times that we've seen Clayton in transition just continue to attack as the defense is scrambling and not stopping the ball. He just keeps going to either side of the rim. Walter Clayton Jr. Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference Player of the Year as a sophomore. He was an elite football player coming out of Lake Wales High School in Florida. He said, I decided to gamble on myself, leave football behind. We had SEC offers. And stick with the hardwood at 6'2", 195. He's had an all-conference season for the Gators. Estrada right down the paint. Pump fade, and he sneaks it in. First two for Estrada. That ends a 17-0 Florida run. Then it's a play in the half. Florida has led at the half in the previous two meetings with Bama this year. This is impressive based on Alabama's start. This is three straight halves of basketball that Florida has really dominated mm. Alabama when you consider what happened down in Gainesville. And now a 13-point lead here under a minute to go. Right cell off the opposite foot, half the board. Google has Richard. He'll take it and got stripped. Count in there to pick it up. Clayton somehow keeps a dribble alive and bounces to Richard for the jam. It is a toy store first half for Florida. They are just playing with Bama. A 15-point advantage and a 21-2 run. Sears with the drive and a behind-the-back dish. Pringle finally gets it up. What a close for Florida in this first half. They hang 48 on Bama, 50% shooting, 4 of 10 from deep, and 21 of the last 23 points in this half belong to the Gators. How was your team able to settle in throughout the course of the first half? I, I didn't necessarily love the eight-point lead. We spotted them, but uh, we knew they were going to come out fresh and come out ready to go, but I thought we did a great job kind of maintaining our composure. And then once we got comfortable, we really started playing well. Obviously, I scored by 23 after that eight-point lead. How do you continue this momentum into the second half? We just got to stay the course. Obviously, we realize the way we played over the last 16 minutes is going to work if we can sustain that. 
Got to limit their three-point attempts. Got to keep taking care of the ball and keep them off the glass. So if we do that, we'll be in good shape. Thank you, Coach. Yep, you're welcome. Tom, back over to you. All right, that last bucket, another thing of beauty for Florida. The back cut left it wide open for the jam for Richard. Now let's get to the set for America's favorite boy band, Dari, Shooter, Slay. <laughs> Somebody turn on Fish's mic. Uh, he's our he's our lead dancer. Lang, what'd you hear from Nate Oates? Yeah, I asked Coach what he said to the guys at halftime. He said, well, when things got tough, we didn't continue to play as hard as we needed to. They tracked blue-collar points to track toughness. He said we looked good for the first few minutes, but not for the final few minutes of the half. It was not where I wanted to see it. He added, guys, we've been in this situation before. We were down 10 to these guys at home. We were down against Arkansas, and we found a way to fight back. We still have plenty of time. All right, thank you. Tyree Samuel commits the foul. That's his first. Hand off to Estrada. He's got a hand lock to him on him. And through the double foul, Pringle, who got it rejected by Samuel. To Alyssa's point, this is an Alabama team that has seen themselves down double digits. They do not panic because they know how explosive their offense is. This one feels a little bit different, though, with the way Florida's had their number for three consecutive halves. In control by Samuel as he cleared through on Nelson. Largest lead of the game for Florida. Two quick fouls by Samuel, though. Hand check there. So his second. And a good week for Todd Golden. 19 minutes and 27 seconds away from a semifinal appearance and an extension bestowed on Golden for his success in his first two years in Gainesville. Estrada for three. And it's taken away by Richard. That extension came with a nice little pad to the salary for Todd Golden. He's a Bruce Pearl assistant before going to San Francisco and then getting the job in Gainesville. Poland with a little shrug of the shoulders. He's got a baker's dozen. We've seen this league and the schools in this league make a commitment to facilities and coaches and to retain talent. Like Todd Golden is a huge key to the continued su success in this league. And I think the other thing, coaches don't want to leave this league. This is where you want to be as a college head coach. Sears hard in the hand log to It's only the sixth point of the game for Mark Sears. By the way, Commissioner uh, Greg Sankey is in the building tonight. He's been hard at work and reframing the college football playoff. Looks like that. Hay is in the barn at this point, according to reports by Pete Thamel and company. Clayton floaters off the mark. And make no mistake, revenue, one big reason these coaches want to stay here. And after high-profile jobs opened up in the ACC, in the Big Ten, three different SEC schools went hard to work, and the AD secured the money to lock down their coaches, starting with Lamont Paris. Here's Tyree Samuel, guarded by Pringle. Pop, you can't stop, and Samuel gets another paint bucket. He loves the spin move on that left block. Pringle forgot the scouting report. Hard foul from Hanlogson. Well, Pringle does a nice job pushing this catch out away from the block. That's where you want him to get it, but you got to know that he loves to spin back baseline when he's on this side of the court. And Samuel makes him pay. Nice move. A, a lot of teams in this league don't have a big. They can just dump it down to and get a bucket without relying on your guards to be your penetrators for a paint touch. Florida has that in Samuel. Nick Pringle at the free throw line. Coming out of Whale Branch High School in South Carolina where they won the 2A state championship. He was a 6-2 player as a sophomore. Grew to 6'9 his senior year, and that's where he is now. And you see the revamped form at the free throw line, trying to keep the hand underneath the ball so the shooting hand doesn't get to the side of it. The Juco route and turned into the number one junior college power forward at Dodge City Community College. Got out of Dodge to head to Wofford before coming to Bama. Emma didn't make a free throw in the first half, 0 for 4. They make the first two here. They've got to string together some consecutive stops because right now, Florida's got Alabama in a danger zone. And they have gotten some good looks three straight times to Samuel. And so that, that's what makes Florida so dangerous. If you want to stay glued to their guards and make the fives beat you, that has worked at times. But Samuel's their best back-to-the-basket threat. 
And I know Alabama doesn't like zone, but right now you got to figure out a way to get Florida off kilter on the offensive end. Tyree Samuel transfer from Seton Hall. He had an adventure at the free throw line last night. He set an SEC tournament record with free throw attempts. He went to the line 23 times. He only made nine of them. Mo Diabate checks in for Alabama. This is a guy early in the season that turned five seconds of playing time into seven to ten minutes on average. Nato sent him in the game in the first half at the end of the first half for a two for one to foul intentionally to get the ball back in a game against Arizona. So he sprinted to the scores table, smile on his face, did whatever he could to help the team for five seconds, came right back out. And he said, that's the type of attitude we need to have on this team. And Tendon White has earned his way back into the rotation because of that sort of attitude and team first. Whoa! Samuel downhill in the Tomahawk Jam gives Florida its largest lead of the game. Tyree Samuel with no regard for your storytelling. <laughs> That's right. Well, we saw Bama get these pick and rolls early in the game, and now Florida will take their own medicine. And man, you gotta turn your phone on airplane mode from up there. Nice. <laughs> They've done, Mr. Samuel. He has taken over this second half. Eight of his 12 coming after intermission. Sears at the free throw line now. Muscle Shoals High School. Then to Hargrave and then Ohio in the back. And there's his mom. Hannah Mimes a free throw every time since she handed the cookie jar. That's the coolest horse I've ever seen. Uh-huh. What would you keep in that for? <laughs> uh question and then our wife's credit card <laughs> just keep it locked up can you tell i got a low credit alert today <laughs> i'm in danger zone like this alabama team right now <laughs> you're away and she's spending all your money <laughs> hand logged and couldn't hit the bunny we talk a lot about alabama struggling defensively and that's a very real thing but also the nation's leading scoring team got to find some offense at the same time they just ha keep being one and done on that end of the court. No extra opportunities at the rim because of the interior presence of Florida. Samuel working on Nelson. Lost it and hand and found it. First bucket for the sophomore transfer from Marshall, Mike and hand -Larkin. Florida's third best in the nation at getting their own misses. Alabama's done an okay job there, but even when they make a miss, they can't collect it. Do you ever find that even for an offensive-minded team like Alabama, it's hard to have confidence on that end of the floor when you're giving up so many buckets on the other end? That's a great point. Bruce Pearl used to tell our team back in the day, don't allow your lack of offensive success to dictate your defensive intensity. And I think you hit the nail on the head. That happens to this Alabama team too often. Estrada is able to bank it in. It's his first bucket this half. 19-point deficit. Another wave of Gators ready to check in. Florida has won the SEC tournament four times. The most recent was 10 years ago under Billy Donovan. They didn't lose a game against an SEC opponent that year, 21-0. That led them to the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. Another bucket for Samuel. Well, Nate Oates is furious because that had to be three seconds. Pullen was stopped in the lane holding the ball, and then he's got to get out of the lane. Tough break for Alabama. Sound like somebody who waits for the crosswalk to light up before you move across the street here in Nashville. <laughs> you get some gator like... Uh, New Mexico, by the way, will tip off later tonight against Colorado State, the Mountain West Tournament in Las Vegas. Condon carried it out of bounds, went down hard. Condon's like, how is that not a foul? Pringle fell on top of me. I mean, Estrada gets caught in the air. I think he's got Pringle on the roll. And maybe they corrected this, but Condon's got it. Guy falls on him. 
to say off on you, but they correct him. Second on Pringle. He didn't hurt that bad. He's just a chip. Gold wants to review it. Further look at it. The last play is under review. No, I, I, that's certainly what they're looking for. I don't think there was. I, I think Pringle came down and realized he was. Oh, that right arm, yeah. maybe. Yeah. No. By the way, the Florida coaching staff deserves. He had his elbow to the back of the year. Deserves credit for late game substitution highs. Jonathan Sapphire saw his Demery back in the game, even though no time had come off the clock. After you, common foul. To the net ranking. That's why these coaches, all of a sudden, you say, why are the starters still in? Late the oh, games? Yeah. And it, it matters. The walk ons aren't getting the playing time like they used to. There's, there's no doubt about it. But Ken Palm says you're supposed to beat a team by 18, or favor to beat a team by 18. And you don't, then you lose efficiency points. So those formulas have been altered and tightened, and some of them are a mystery to these coaches, but they used to be known pretty well. I told this story last night. Five years ago when Buzz Williams was at Virginia Tech and living on the bubble, that was the second on Cotton, by the way, they were losing a game to Louisville late. He fouled multiple times to stop the clock, even though there wasn't a chance they're going to win the game, so he could whittle the deficit to single digits. The difference in their rating, 0.00004%. So even if he had done that perfectly over the course of 10 games, it would have been such a minuscule impact. But these coaches scratch and claw over every decimal point and even four spots before that. So when it comes to Selection Sunday, they're in a better position. So moral to the story is when you see a trailing coach call a timeout play, stop booing. And be sensitive to the net situation. One more time. There's mom wanting to knock down another. Yeah, be sensitive to that. There's the purse. It has helped Sears to make, coming into this game, 30 of his previous 32 free throws. Clayton for three. Fouled on the three. Charge to Rylan Griffin is second. Uh, I love how he comes off this screen and he sees Griffin over pursuing and he stops on a dime. Instead of just kind of continuing to cut, look how he's going to stop here and get just a little bit of opening. Really heady play there as he saw his defender going towards the ball. So for this Alabama team, I. Uh, Similar to other teams coming in, you, you worried about Tennessee's consistency scoring outside of Dalton Connect. That weird us ugly hat. You worry about Kentucky's defense. We've seen that question mark pop up after Texas A&M put near 100. And Nate Oates has publicly said, look, we are not a tough defensive team. We've been exposed several times this season. And this is not the effort he wanted to see in the SEC tournament. So a lot of the question marks still remain. I saw the top SEC teams going to March Madness. Here's Estrada working on pulling. I would counter with this, and I, I think perhaps Kentucky is a good example. This Alabama team could be a good example. First of all, styles make the fight, right? It depends on who ends up on your bracket as to whether or not that's going to play out well for you. Google has it rejected. Um, but my counter is, yes, there are inconsistencies, as there are with any team. But offensively, they are so good, Kentucky and Alabama. Florida is also top 10 in the nation in scoring. Tennessee has a first team All-American don't connect. Yeah, I, you know, I think you get to the point this season, like Florida and Alabama, you're facing a team for the third time. Now. They know you so well. They know all of your tendencies. They know all of your play calls. In fact, talking with coaching staffs throughout this weekend, they get a chance to do live scouting. Yeah, the Auburn staff is right behind us. To a man, all of the assistants have said, my coach wants me here. I'm not learning anything more than I don't already know through the exhaustive film study that we put together. Google has another one coming. And then you get into the tournament next week and you're facing a team that you likely haven't seen all season or maybe in a couple of years. Four for Kugel. 22 point lead for Todd Golden.
Sears penetrates and takes it off the glass. By the way, there is one less hoop in the building today. If you remember, the Florida band had a fake hoop that they rose when Georgia was shooting free throws in the first half yesterday. It was nearly regulation size. It was a great little band prank that they pulled. But I ended up on the elevator with, I don't know, 76 of them back at the hotel last night. And they were very disappointed. They had to reinvent a way to bring that fake goal because uh, the stadium security told them that they couldn't bring the pole in. Yeah, cute idea, but curse the game. The free throw shooting for both teams was abysmal. I blame it all on the prop. <laughs> you think maybe Tyrese Samuel nudged up against one of them and said, hey, can you just uh, leave that back in the embassy suites, please? And logs in. Reverses in and it falls in. They just keep coming at you. This stable of bigs. They start 6'10, 6'11, and they bring in another 6'10, 6'11 with fresh bodies that just wear you down on the interior throughout the course of the game. All of the commentator talk leading into this tournament was that it was wide open. And I think that. Those of us who have covered the league all season believe it, but now we're seeing that as we see absent a massive Alabama comeback, the top three seeds all lose on the same day. Yeah, you felt like one through six, maybe seven could get in there, but now all of a sudden you got seven seed A&M and then Mississippi State, what, eight or nine still alive? Yep, that's the nine seed. Time now for the Confident Player, brought to you by Regions. Well, Tyrese Samuel has dominated in this second half, and he took it personal. You're not going to bring a double team on me. I'm going to abuse you down low in the post. And they threw different bodies at him. Samuel had no problem, no matter the matchup. And then even a guard tries to hold him over there on the elbow. And then, of course, the thunder is done. Four of five including two of two from the strike where he struggled last night. Ten big points in the second half allowing Florida to pull away from Alabama. A better site for the SEC men's basketball tournament. Here's Pringle at the free throw line. Seven for him. We have a chance to darken some honky talk doors tonight since you don't have to work tomorrow. Maybe Dane Branch will be out on the town. Um, well, the stage name is Deep Dizzle, but I'll enter as Dane Bradshaw. I want you and Slay to hang together. <laughs> How is Slay feeling after he walked in with the Tennessee team today? He ain't feeling good, huh? We got to get some hot takes from Slay up there. We're still not talking since he didn't invite us to the wing fest he had yesterday. He bragged about. Yeah, he shut us out of the wings. Condon off the mark. It will be live post game from the set in Bridgestone Arena. Wrights and Junior for three. They got to do the full show. No cheat either. You can't take the C to D segment ahead of time. Share any other stories about Ron Slay that you have from his time on campus. Just my Dane Bradshaw on Twitter. Walter Clinton Jr.'s got 17. It's story time about Ron Slay. Listen, what he got. My my Uber <laughs> driver from the airport was name dropping Ron Slay like the entire ride to downtown Nashville. He's the most popular guy in town. Sam Walters throws in a three. Florida has a 21 point lead. Into this one. Four of 19 from three. Here's Samuel down the lane. Goes off. Sears the rebound. See if they can get some quick transition buckets here. They get some little run. Try to get this thing to a manageable number. It's just not their night. Sears got whistled for his third. I want to climb inside your head right now. Since I mentioned it five minutes ago, now have you noticed how cold your feet are? <laughs> and I got two subs on. <laughs> well, why well, total? Oh. <laughs> this is bad. Yeah. It's bad math. The one sock kind of guy. 
Look, I'm a they one sport kind of guy, guy a, too. They didn't That's know this true. was a hockey arena until tonight. It's not true. I just don't know my hockey trivia. All apologies to the Predators. That's their name, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, we made the Stanley Cup Finals 17. Walter's got his hands on it and a tripping foul. Well, this tournament started off with a couple of bangers for us on Wednesday night and a freaky Friday. Not exactly what the ticket scalpers had. No, it, it's been an odd tournament. But I think the most important thing from the league's perspective, trying to get as many teams in as possible, Mississippi State, Texas A&M have stolen the show. When you've got your back against the wall and opportunities in front of you, Chris Jans in Mississippi State stepped up huge, and then Buzz Williams put any doubts to rest that they're an NCAA tournament team. Clayton knocks them both home. He's got 19. I think an interesting storyline to follow through the weekend will be the growth potential for Auburn, which will be the best seed remaining. And if uh, Bruce Pearl's team can get another tournament championship like they did a few years ago, what impact would that have on yep. their seed line? They come in with an incredibly high net ranking. Here's Walters in traffic. They started off at 33. They have been so steady and consistent. They're sixth in the net. The net strength of schedule is okay. The quad one and two record is 10 and seven. Estrada off the window. That's just the sixth fast break point for Alabama in this game. We talked about them being one and done on the offensive end, and Florida's just been brilliant. Only four offensive rebounds. But see if that bucket can get Alabama going a little bit. Try to get this thing to 12 or 10 with five, six minutes to go. Clayton into the paint. Cut off. Nelson gambled, lost his balance, and Tyree Samuel delivers. Again, 16 points for Samuel. Hey, Oates going to bring Pringle in to try to get a little bit more physicality down there. Great Nelson going to lose his footing, but Samuel has just been a terror in this second half. Just his position. And Loves that spin move on that block, and that was probably not even necessary when his defender's on the ground. But Alabama came into this game saying, hey, Florida imposed their will on us. And they threw the first punch with a quick start. But Florida woke up, made their adjustments, and said, let's get back to Florida Gator basketball. And whew, that's a scary sight when you see the inside out. And, and the biggest knock to me on Florida this year, yes, defensively, that can be an issue at times, but 40 minutes of basketball. And other than that start, they have played a really consistent ball game here with eight minutes to go. Mark Sears' mom coaching him way to, on the way to another couple of makes from the free throw line. This is in a game of games, but this is about the spot where Mark Sears just took over. It wasn't enough to get out of bed to win, but he can play with an offensive freedom that can allow him to go on individual runs. There's a double and a kick to the corner for three. Buried by Will Richard, his first points this half. That all starts with Samuel. He's had so much success. He requires a double team now. Makes a perfect three to the opposite corner. Griffin into Samuel who commits the foul. It's the fourth on the floor to Griffin coming back from that injury. 0 for 4 in this game. had not looked quite like himself. Who does he look like? Maybe Griffin from a year ago. <laughs> Just a rusty Griffin instead of Riley Griffin. How about that? That's good. Shake some of that off, though, because they, they need him. He's, he's really been an unsung hero for this Alabama team. When their offense is at their best, it's when he's in the game. I mean, think about the shoes he had to fill replacing Brandon Miller at that three spot. Well, Griffin knocks them both down. Yeah, and the, not only the roster turnover for Nate Oates, but the staff turnover. Three of his assistants got three D1 head coaching jobs. And for them to put together the season they have, I think has been one of the better coaching jobs in the league, despite the performance his team is showing. South Carolina 
having lost that game, likely a five. Good news that uh, even after the adjustments, Kentucky's holding on to a three seed. I'm sure that lead in the clubhouse, they hope to hold on to it over the next two days heading into Selection Sunday. One of the ways they're able to move up to that came after the Duke loss in the ACC tournament. Florida had a 15-point lead at the break. They've escorted Bama by nine. Nelson said, put me in the video clip. Follow jam and a foul. One of the few times we've seen Alabama get an extra shot with an offensive rebound here as Grant Nelson flies in. Great effort there to attack from the backside. Get himself an M1. Right on the hands of Alex Pondy. Full court pressure. Ball in with the spin at the timeline. Directs traffic and puts it on the floor. Out into the corner. And they work at the Condon. Loose ball pushed to Hauk again with the shot clock winding down. Aberdeen. Another chance for the Gators. Eighth offensive rebound of the night. Hauk for three. Stevenson spins and takes it off the glass and in. You got to admire this Alabama fans continuing to stay in it. Nate Oates fights all the time. He's imploring his team, get up. We're trying to press. Stevenson gathering himself for a minute. I don't know if he got bumped on that last player. Just wondered. They leave Condon all alone. And Alex Condon splashes down a three. His dad, Damon, a great footy player growing up. In Australia is Monlea, part of the Australian national swim team, and Rylan Griffin knocks down his first triple of the season. A uh, part me at the gate. Pollard sends Nelson to the ground, and Richard misses his three. Under six to play. The efficiency for Florida yeah. is going down fast, but they built themselves such a large cushion it doesn't seem to be much of an issue. Alabama unable to clean up the defensive glass. There's Denzel Aberdeen. Sears to Nelson. Oh, man. And then Sears fighting for it, gets it to Estrada for the layup. That's why he's a first-team All-SEC guy. There's no quitting Sears. It's been one of those nights for Alabama. And when you're down 22, you don't typically see this type of effort. But watch Sears and White here. That He's going to be the first to the deck. Dive on this loose ball. Get it to Estrada for the two. Be curious how Nate Oates addresses this game. I mean, likely not going to see Florida again this year. You want to have your team playing confident basketball on a short memory, yet you still have to address what went wrong in this game and in the film room. What's, Such a balance. Yeah, what's fixable about what went wrong for Bama tonight? Well, nice dunk there by Pringle. Uh, I think it's just more reinforcement that, guys, we can't just have our offense bail us out game in, game out. And they've, there's been multiple examples this season where teams have just gotten the best of them on this end of the court. And so it's been trying to find the best defensive rotations. And this has been a tough matchup for them with these Florida bigs. It was a walk for Samuel, but what a feed from Clayton. I think another thing, depending on who they get matched up with the NCAA tournament, is hey, if they got a bunch of bigs, we got to figure out if we're going to double team down low on the post, play a little bit of zone if you got to, but figure out a way 
to help your front line. Estrada for three. Nobody checked him. I think the other thing, too, for Florida is they got the message from Todd Golden. Yes, they won against Georgia, but that was not a good defensive effort. They were getting beat off the bounce all game long. Sam Walters with his second triple. Florida lead whittled down to 15 thanks to a 7-0 Bama run. Clayton lost his footing, and they'll get Nelson for the foul. They say Nelson tripped him. Disbelief on the Alabama sideline. Grant Nelson and Nate Oates on the same page here. As Clayton Jr. just falls on his own, yet Nelson gets whistled for a call. Not the right call on that one. We're telling people for weeks, buy your tickets to Nashville because you're going to see some of the craziest basketball you've seen in years, and it's already delivered. We're not even a Saturday. If you're into the trivia, this will be the highest seed total we've had in the semis. A seed total with 16 Florida, 7 a and 4 Auburn, and 9 Mississippi State brings it to 26. In 2018, we had a 2, 4, 6, and 9. That was a 21-point total if you add them up. And that's 21 for Walter Clayton Jr. now. Sears off the window. And of the top scoring teams in the SEC and also the country, the only one to advance to the weekend will be Florida. Bama number one in scoring, Kentucky number two in the country. And they'll both be going home early. Ooh. What a move by Howick. How about old school MJ a little bit going, showing you the right, then switches it last minute with the left. Pringle can't stop popping. They got another jam. He's got a dozen. Defense optional here in the final four minutes. We saw this in the Kentucky game, even though Florida with a bigger cushion than A&M had, but the problem for Kentucky wasn't getting scores, it was getting stops. And that seems to be the same issue right now with Alabama. Lob down low, knocked away by Pringle, but Samuel picked up another foul. Well, this has not been Alabama's best offensive performance, but they've gotten some good looks. And this was a good one on Florida's end. What an athletic play. These bigs and their athleticism on the perimeter has been the difference. And Pringle going up high to get that alley-oop. Very impressed with Alabama's continued fight here down the stretch, even though they have not played their best basketball. Tyree Samuel at the free throw line, and last night was a journey. How do you handle that? as a coaching staff. He is, after a nine for 23 night, at the free throw line last night, he is perfect at the strike tonight. What I loved about it last night was, most bigs don't want to go back to the free throw line, so they start playing softer. He never let the free throw line and the lack of success there stop his style of play. And it's rewarded him in this one, and good to see him go four for four, get his confidence back. Utah goal. Two time All Canada playing. Going up in Montreal, Quebec. Estrada got fouled by Aberdeen. Florida could be crossing the century mark for the second time against Alabama this year. Aaron Estrada. A lot of gear in his closet, right? Coming out of Woodbury, New Jersey. Spent a prep year at St. Benedict's. 
Oregon, St. Peter's, Hofstra, who's a MAC Rookie of the Year at St. Peter's, made 14 starts at Oregon in the 2021 season. And he's been terrific for NATO. It's, he, he's probably the one guy that I thought should have been on the first or second, probably second All-SEC team was left off. He's been close to having several triple-doubles and finally got one at Ole Miss. He fills the stat sheet for him and kind of the unsung hero as Mark Sears gets a lot of the attention, rightfully so, but Estrada has been extremely consistent for Nate Oates and really changed his game. He came in shooting a lot of the mid-range jumpers. It took a while for him to learn, like, hey, the numbers don't add up. i got to get to the rim more. And he's become a complete player for the Nate Oates system. Against Ole Miss, it was 18 points, 10 boards, and 10 assists, the fourth triple-double of school history. Out to the free throw line, Florida has eclipsed 100 points three times this season. Samuel can rest the remainder of the two fourteens. Oh for two. Talk to Mark Shears about his growth as a player this season. And he lost so much talent off of last year's team, including, of course, the player of the year, Brandon Miller. And he didn't talk about, when you ask him about what's the biggest leap forward you made this season. And it's not about the offensive freedom that he's had. It's not about the scoring going through the roof and being one of the top scorers in the league. But it's about the leadership and the maturity to bring the rest of these new teammates along with him. And that is commendable. And he's really put the work in. He said at the start, not only one of the best players in the SEC, you could argue he's the most improved player in the league as well. Yeah, he and Sean East would be up to that conversation. Griffin in transition. Just in terms of scoring total. Free throws coming the other way. In Florida, this is the balance you want, right? They've got five guys in double figures. So the guards lead the headlines and get the accolades. But the bigs clean up the mess. They get the stops. They embrace their role as screeners and rebounders. And that's what makes this Florida team so successful. I mean, it, it was early February. and This was a projected 11 seed. Mm -hmm. And over the course of four weeks, they climbed all the way to a six. So they just went on a tear in the middle of SEC play. This will be their eighth win in their last 11 games. Sears sizes it up. Stevenson collecting some points late. Full floor pressure with a minute to play. And a throwaway off of Hauk. Where's Reggie Miller? 59.8 of the clock, down 14. Two Saturdays ago, Alabama had college game day in town in Tennessee. On their campus, it was a disappointing loss and a real gut punch for this team. And then they went in midweek to Florida on the Gators' senior night and lost their second in a row. Sears with a beautiful reverse. And talking with Nados that Wednesday, uh, from that Tuesday in Gainesville, and he said, you know what, I think we're just, we're just tired. We're just an exhausted team physically and emotionally. After those two L's, they came back home and got an overtime win against Arkansas. Nobody wants to take a loss. But the silver lining for this Alabama team is that they get a chance to rest over the course of the weekend, figure out how you, who you're playing on Sunday night, and then come back strong next Thursday or Friday. 16 for Zion Pollock. Well, Nate Oates will tell you himself that, hey, the most successful teams he's had go deep in the tournament, including the successful Buffalo team. 
It wasn't the offense all the time. It was the fact that their defense was usually top 30 or so in Ken Palm, and they've just not had that complimentary basketball so far this season. Bama keeping the pressure on. You know, this is a Florida team that, like I said, not too long ago, Clayton puts a bow on it, gets them up to the century mark. It's a Florida Gator team that you wondered would they even make the tournament. And yet, five, six weeks later, you're wondering how far are they going to go in the tournament because when you see this sort of effort, there's no reason why they can't be included in one of the SEC teams you could see Sweet 16 and beyond. And sit on Griffin, he fouls out. Florida and Texas A&M will meet for the second time this season tomorrow. The Gators went to College Station to open February and lost a one-point game back on February 3rd. That game was played in the 60s. After the way both teams played today, I don't know if it's possible to play in the 60s again tomorrow, but you figure that would be advantage A&M. We'll start with Mississippi State and Auburn. A&M entered this tournament quietly as the most confident team nobody was really talking about. They picked up a couple road wins, had a three-game winning streak. They've got their lineups figured out with Manny Obaski inserted towards not just Taylor Radford. And they've continued that hot streak in this SEC tournament. 51% shooting, including 7 of 20 from deep for this Florida team. Todd Golden able to empty his bench. Cooper Josephsburg commits the foul. He'll be in the box score. For Todd Gold and his team, they, they, I think they want another shot at AM. They remember how close they were after they had that huge win, overtime win against Kentucky. Then they went to AM and had them on the ropes and weren't able to come away with it. Lost the battle at the free throw line that Coach Gold was not thrilled about. And that's such a tough part of playing Texas A&M is be able to defend them without fouling. It was a one-point loss in College Station early February. Another tally for Sears. He's got 22. Florida will run the clock out, and the Gators, for the first time in five years, will play on into the weekend and make a semifinal appearance. They get Texas A&M tomorrow night, but a good week to be golden, that's for sure. But how about Tyree Sanders? Yeah, with all the attention on the guards, he gets one-on-one -on -one attention in the post. They don't bring a double team, and he made Alabama pay, particularly in the second half. And this was to really start the second half. The message was which team was going to impose their will. Tyree Samuel, Samuel is the one that did that. 14 huge points in the second half. That allowed Florida to keep that momentum after a strong first half close. Alyssa, I want you to ask Tyrese, how do you say bounce back in French? Because he bounced back at the free throw line tonight. Tom Hart wants to know how you say bounce back in French after the bounce back on the free throw line tonight. I have no idea, but this is what I can tell you. The basketball guys are on my side today. I love it. What did coach say to you and your teammates just now after this big win tonight? He said, just come out and play hard. And we were gonna get this done, you know? We played yesterday, you know, we got that little nervousness out of us. We came today and we played great, so thankful. What did you and your teammates talk about after that win last night that propelled you into this one today? You know, just come out with a stronger start, you know? Uh, they came out fast out the gate, and then, but we kept our composure and it, and it showed that we came with a 15 point lead and uh, going into halftime, so yeah, that's it. You play so fearlessly, so confidently. Where does that come from for you? I think just experience. You know, I've been playing for a long time now, so I think it's just experience. Tell me about this team and what makes y'all prime for a run, not only here in Nashville, but for the rest of March. Uh, the versatility and depth. Anyone on our team could play. We got great guys coming from Walt, Zion, Kondo, Hawk, Micah. It doesn't matter. Like, we got depth, so that, that's the main thing. Congratulations on the win, Tyrese. Thank you so much. And I got Todd Golden, the head coach of the Florida Gators, for the second straight night. You're familiar with him. Third time you've seen him. 
You're so successful offensively against them. What is the plan? What was the plan going in? You know what? We, uh, we know if we can play fast and get out in transition, you know, we, we feel like we can score on pretty much anybody. And uh, the first couple minutes of the game were a little concerning, you know, going down 8-0. Uh, you know, I was, didn't know if we were going to be able to find our way, but we did a really good job. Uh, limited them defensively, getting clean rebounds, getting out and running. Once we were able to do that, it opened up for us quite a bit. Coach, first half, at halftime, you go up, you're up 15. Yeah. You know, there may be some people who are saying the explosive Alabama offense, they're going to come back on you. What the guy you to your right suggested. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'm just saying there may be some people. I was nervous about it, too. Hey, I said you wouldn't blow them out. I kind of blew him out. I'm not going to name names, Damian Fishback, but what you did you... kind of blew him out. You made me how'd you, bad, how did you prepare your team to stop that kind of a comeback? Well, you're right. I mean, they're the number one offense in America for a yeah. reason. We knew that we were going to have to keep scoring to win the game. We weren't going to try to take the air out of the ball. We weren't going to try to run clock in the second half. We wanted to keep our foot on the gas and uh, keep being efficient and keep scoring. And we did a great job. We, we talk about winning each mini game. We won that first four minutes of the second half by six points, got it up to 21 or whatever it was, and uh, it really kind of let us settle down a little bit and realize we were going to be in good shape if we stayed the course. Coach, I, I came into this situation saying I learned my lesson last year. I had mentioned something about Florida, you being a new coach, and Mama Golden somehow <laughs> reached out to me and told me, my be, yeah, oh. be careful talking about my baby. Boy. And I said, hey, you've had her on TV yeah, a little bit here. I ain't making this. There she is. I told her, when he mentioned that, I said, Mama Golden, come up here at this desk and take care of baby boy now. But this is what I want to know. How much emphasis is it put on? We always talk about the interior. And I know I love the big man in the rotation, but when you got Will Richard playing the way he is, as he is in this tournament, I think that's been missing. How much of an X factor is he for you guys? Uh, he, you know, we talk to him about it all the time. We talk to your team about it. You know, we, a lot of people talk about when he scores over 10 points, how successful we are. But to be honest, when he defends and rebounds at a very high level like he has been doing over the last couple of weeks, that really is a separator for us. He's going to make shots. Yeah. Uh, he's done it his whole career. He's a very efficient player, and uh, he's a winner, man. And he's a guy that is a great teammate, great attitude, great work ethic every day. He's a gator, man. Yeah. He's the type of guy that we want to build around. You know, Coach Golden, you've had a lot of success this year. And, and I'm curious, you know, is it the guard play? Is it your depth? Is it your length? Or is it these rowdy reptiles behind you that have made the difference today in this tournament? You know what? It's a, it's a little bit of all that, right? I think yeah. we, uh, I wouldn't trade my guards for anybody. I'll go to war with ZP and Walt in the backcourt any day of the week. Uh, we have great size and length on at the wing with Riley and Will. You know, they're great athletes, great players. And then our yeah. front court. Uh, you know, our freshmen have really stepped up for us, both Alex Condon and Tommy Houck, and uh, the depth that they provide our team. You know, Reese and Micah are a great tandem, but then when we can bring those guys off the bench, there's no drop-off. You know, they can do different things. They can defend, they can run, they can bang some shots, and they play with such great energy and physicality that uh, I think we wear teams down because of that. Yeah. It, it was easy to joke around last night after a win with Tyrese, who hit was 9 yeah. of 23 or whatever from the last. How about 4 for 4? Hey, <laughs> what you put in What you put in Hey, and shoot around today. We told him he couldn't, he couldn't participate until he made 100 free throws. Until <laughs> so we got him in there. And the best was last time we played these guys at home, a big reason that's why we were so successful is he went 9 for 9 from the line in yeah. that game. And uh, yesterday it took him a few more to get those 9 makes. But tonight, you know, I thought he set the tone at the beginning of the second yes. half. He went to work in the low post. They were trying to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. He get, put him in the basket. Then they started doubling a little bit. We got to throw out three on the backside to Will. That was a huge shot. And, uh, you know, I feel like Reese's experience is starting to show up a little bit. He's done a really good job this event. Look, look, look. Yeah, I was going to ask, we're looking forward uh, to yep. tomorrow. How are you going to prepare your team tonight, film, and wake up and let them sleep? <laughs> well, we're we're going to go eat a little bit. We'll go to sleep. Uh, the game's at 2.30 tomorrow here, right? Yeah, 2.30. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a quick turnaround, fellas. Uh, not a lot of prep to be had, but, uh, you know, A&M is a pretty uh, distinct style. You know, yeah. they, they play, you know, a certain way, and uh, we know we're going to have to battle like heck on the boards and take care of the ball. If we do that, we'll give ourselves a chance. How much yeah. basketball does mom know? No. Uh, you know, she coached a little ball back in the day. Okay. Fresh, freshman high school. Developing the youth. It was a while ago, you know. Um, but, yeah, she, she's a believer, man. Yeah. yeah. I want one of them Mama Golden plates when I come down at a visit, man. Mama Golden loving this. Look at him, man. Soak this up, coach. It's him, baby. Go 
Go see Go see mom. Yes, Go see mom. Good right. stuff, man. Thanks, Thank guys. you, Coach. Appreciate, yeah, appreciate y'all. <laughs> All right.